Hi, it's Paula from Paula Quilting. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Some time ago I shared on my Facebook page that I went to the um, thrift store, uh, secondhand shop and I found those two hanging next to each other and uh, kind of straight away it struck me how great quilt or block I can make out of those two fabrics. So this is a bedding, nice cotton bedding and this is a curtain but because it's lined the top fabric is not actually like you know very stiff it's a nice uh, cotton fabric and uh, what i liked with those two fabrics kind of when they hung when they hung together there is uh, how kind of color coordinated that they are and there was also a block i wanted to do for a very long time but i wanted to make it big so for that block i needed a lot of fabric and I thought this is a great opportunity for me to use it up. So the block I want to make is going to be Chandash, but the big one. It's going to be a 12 by 24 size when it's uh, finished. And I will be using just those two fabric uh, to build it. I've got it all right down the dimensions I need of um, you know, individual pieces. Don't worry about writing it down as I'm saying it because I will put it on my website uh, which you can access and download it. It will be somewhere in the uh, pattern section. Uh, but basically what I want to do is not just do a simple churn dash. I want to use um, some strip sets uh, to make the sides and some some interesting bits in the in the middle just to make it a little bit uh, more funky though i'm going to be using just two fabrics so if you happen to have like me maybe some nice colorful bedding or some other piece of fabric you would like to use that way to show it off uh, that that might be a um, pattern for you So how I'm going to work with it is because I uh, obviously don't know how much of the fabric exactly I've got so that's where you may be as well. Uh, I will decide how many blocks I want to make and I will start cutting from the biggest pieces. And the biggest pieces are uh, squares I will need for my half uh, square triangles and those uh, squares in the middle. So once you decide of the size of your quilt you want to make and then whether you would like to make the blocks exactly the same or maybe alternate the colors then you will know how many of the squares you will need i mean the half square triangles will be exactly the same for both of the types of the blocks if you alternate the colors but the middle ones will depend on that uh, block color so i will cut those squares first and they will be uh, for half square triangles i will cut them five and a half inch because i want to square them up to four and a half and then i will cut uh, those squares in the middle which are four and a half there's no action with them, like you don't need to square them up or anything. They go in as they are. And then everything else is really based on the strip sets, two and a half inch strips of one another um, fabric sewn together. So um, I will be working with, you know, parts at the time. So I won't cut, you know, hundreds of strips because I might run out of the fabric to make the squares. So I will cut the squares first and then I will cut some strip sets and then I kind of cut the fabric as I go along as I need it. Because it's actually quite a lot of fabric, I probably won't use all of it. Uh, so then obviously I don't want to cut everything to smaller pieces because I might need bigger one. And the chance is I'll be able to use uh, one of those fabrics for the to back that quilt as well. And then maybe the other one to make the uh, binding. I divided my um, bedding into, you know, front and back sections. So I cut it up and I cut up the, or removed the backing from the... Uh, cur curtain but as you can imagine those two pieces are quite big so to work with it we need to kind of narrow down what we need first thing I did I took a little bit of scrap of the fabrics and I kind of put the uh, kind of you know the stickers of which fabric is which because we're only using two colors uh, but because the pieces are going to be same size or similar size I just want to make sure I don't mix up anything so this is going to be always in front of me uh, while I'm working through my uh, pattern the second thing I, you need to calculate how many blocks you want so uh, like I've mentioned those blocks are quite big um, calculate you know whatever you need and then you will be able for using the pattern calculate how many each of the pieces you will need to, to kind of to complete that block so i need eight that means i need eight times four of half, half square triangles uh, then i need uh, eight times three those middle uh, squares 
8 times 2 those slices here and everything else is the strip set so I can calculate that one uh, as well so let's start from the half square triangles so I need 4 for one block and to have 4 basically I need 2 each of the colors put together and then uh, make into half square triangles so I've got 2 reds or 2 color B to color A and the final uh, p that that final piece uh, before I put it obviously in the block should be a four and a half inches and I'm starting from five and a half inches uh, squares I know you could go a little bit lower but I like rather bigger and square it up than other way around that I you know saw it and then I missed the trick <laughs> so I'm starting from five and a half and I will square them up I will uh, after I make them uh, so let's get cracking so for that I would like to uh, take one of the fabrics which whichever you know it's probably brighter or it will be easier visible on the back of it and because it's bigger piece I will actually draw a line and this is the line we will be stitching on both sides of it uh, in the quarter distance now if your quarter is not quarter is a little bit more that's fine because that square if you cut it to five and a half inches initially like I did you will have enough of a allowance uh, to square them up to four and a half inch so very good uh, kind of beginner's tip uh, you might use up a little bit more fabric but your blocks are going to be uh, more accurate so you kind of go with what you think is the best for you and then you know you might have experience with half square triangles already then you use whatever method uh, is uh, best for you I'm using two at the time because then the bias uh, side of it is already kind of sorted when you're sewing you don't have to worry about uh, stretching the fabric when you're sewing it on the sides but again you might have your favorite method and then the fabric you use it will also determine how you want to go about it so I've drawn the lines now I can pair it up with my curtain fabric and like I said I will stitch on both sides of that line cut it into half open up iron and square up uh, the half square triangle so I will quickly do it now and this exercise you definitely want to chain piece everything so if you know how many blocks you you need and you know how many half square triangles you need to make so just remember from those two sewn together I've got two half square triangles so for each block I just need two of those to be sewn uh, for the four corners so once you've calculated how many you need just chain piece everything that's the best uh, you know advice I can give you on that part of the process so quarter inch and uh, I will just chain piece one side first turn around all fabric and straight on to the other side cut all of my half square triangles sewn and as you can see just two lines on the uh, you know on the other side of the line I've drawn before and um, I did mention that I'm testing some blades so let's see uh, how they cope with those eight layers so I've been cut using that um, the same blade since I think November end of November and I've been cutting fabric multiple layers of the fabric uh, squaring up the quilts uh, I've even used it recently for some paper cutting because I was doing the embroidery set so so far is really performing well and I could say that at this point of time if I've used my old cheaper blades I would probably not have had that result so I'm, I'm ready to give some um, more uh, kind of review and also tell you where you can buy those uh, probably in the next one or two tutorials so if that's something you would like to uh, kind of purchase as well there is going to be a link uh, it is American uh, supplier so if you are in America that's for you unfortunately I don't have anyone here in UK who would have sent me something to test at the moment so with the half square triangles uh, before you get it to the ironing board it's best to kind of finger press them first to not kind of distort that line here I mean I wouldn't worry about it that much either but just for the you know nicer results uh, finger press it first and then when you take it to the iron because they kind of are 
pre-pressed or they are in the right position you can just put the iron on top and uh, job done. Uh, direction of the seams irrelevant is not going to uh, matter later so whichever the fabric wants to take you uh, or depending what fabrics you're using if you're using darker and much darker and much brighter fabrics then obviously you would like to uh, go towards the uh, dark with your seam but uh, direction here is irrelevant so use what, uh, whichever direction you want okay time to square up if you have a ruler which is uh, specifically for half square triangle then that's a good time to use it i don't have one so i'll use a, a normal ruler if you have lots of uh, and lots of squares to square up you may like to use a painter's tape to kind of narrow down where your size is we are squaring up to four and a half so i would have added a tape here to kind of highlight those four and a half uh, inch lines just just to kind of don't mix up anything later uh, and then I will be looking on diagonal where that lines are going in. Uh, some rulers got lines, their mine doesn't, but it's fine. I will just see where the points are meeting. And for now, I just want to square this top uh, to nice edge. I'm not looking for the dimension yet. I just want to go on diagonal and square that to nice edge. once I've got that out of the way I will turn it around and now those uh, edges here I want to align with four and a half and four and a half on my ruler so once they are aligned I just need to cut off that top and you can see that if you aligned it properly your edge top edge of the ruler should be on the uh, between the fabrics here so four and a half by four and a half squaring it up so as you can see there is a little bit of to cut off but like I said I rather have it cut off and square it up nicely to um, whatever dimension I need to square it up then don't worry that I don't have enough that's me you if you have your own preferred method what you want to finish with is four and a half inch half square triangle okay so I've squared up all of my half square triangles they are ready uh, so next part is that middle so for the middle I need color a four and a half inch squares three of them that's easy cutting there's no uh, you know anything extraordinary and then I need the strips for the strip set now again I'm working with big piece of pay of um, fabrics is difficult so what I did I've calculated kind of how long the strip set will be the best to do and how I did it so this bit here is 16 and a half inch before I sewn it into the block and finished this one is four and a half inch so two together is 21 inches so if I've got strips it long 21 inches I should be able to cut those two pieces at the same time but we obviously want to have a little bit of wiggle room uh, always so 22 22 and a half inches so what I did I took my fabric and I cut the big long strip which was about 23 inches uh, all along the the fabric and then I started cutting my two and a half inch uh, strip so it's just to make it uh, easier for myself so I cut that many of those for the kind of two color strip sets and then extra couple uh, or you know few more for that middle section because that will be then cut to uh, four and a half inches uh, length so let me just quickly show you my strip sets so here we go my 21 ish obviously a little bit more extra uh, length so I need uh, so again it's easy then calculate how many of those strip sets uh, to make for each block because I need one strip set here second strip set here so that's two strip sets of the long pieces and then from from that extra color uh, B I will have you know you probably need one for like five pieces of the middle section so if you cut you know I normally cut as I go I don't cut too much in one go so for this ones I, I cut maybe four and then if I obviously needed more later then I can do it as well but this you, it will be quite easy to calculate how many of those you need so we need two strip sets of the 22 inches to do that frame around uh, for each of the blocks multiply by the number of blocks and you arrive to your your mat so now I will quickly stitch those two together and then iron again seam um, direction is irrelevant in in this piece just quickly zip through so again if you know how many you need uh, you can chain piece it all in one go quite quite quick will work
finish my strips I did iron them and um, for, for kind of tip about ironing anything um, what I started doing some time ago is a kind of finger press everything now before I put iron on top of it kind of makes the lines better so when I do my ironing as it comes in from the sewing like this I will iron that uh, part first just to make it warm because then when I open it and then finger press it kind of tends to stay uh, that way and it's easier to uh, work with so I've got my strip set I need to cut 16 and a half inch and and a four and a half inch piece so you can stack as many as you feel comfortable with whatever kind of feels good to you I will just first obviously make that one edge nice and then I will use my long ruler to measure 16 and a half inch make sure you have the right side of the measurements you're looking at so and uh, my, my zero is here, so I'm looking at the bottom, not at the top. I'm, I'm mentioning it because I did it once, so... <laughs> uh, you just want to make sure you're looking correctly on your rulers. Okay, so that's where my 16 and a half inch is. I will use my second ruler to put at the end and cut. I, do, I did that way because I don't want to turn around my uh, strips here when I'm recording. Uh, otherwise it would have been easier to kind of trim the edge, turn it around and go from that side because I'm right handed. But you just do it the way it, you know, it's easier for you, like this. You turn it around, straight edge here. And four and a half inch. Let's kind of review the block. So I've got my corners, half square triangles, I've got my strip sets. Now I just need some squares and uh, rectangles which is easy to cut and we are able to put this block together. Okay, I've got my other pieces here. I, I can set up my block now and just move some stuff away. So my kind of the frame is going to be red. So what I want to obviously do is put my red to the inside. Start from there. Then if I go with my corner blocks, then the red again is going to be to the inside. Uh, that's how I'm setting my block. You obviously do whichever block uh, setup you like, whichever color where. So that's the corners here. Then the middle section, I've got my smaller strip set to go in here again red to the inside and then I've got my square so square square smaller pieces here and there will be square in the middle and how to sew it quickly and easily is first I will do that bit in the middle so just those three squares and two rectangles I will sew it all together and then you basically you've got a nine patch there's nothing you know complicated here you will work for it the same way as you you would do with the nine patch so let's start from sewing that piece uh, and we get going if I was making more than one block at the time I would have stuck those pieces um, to chain piece but I, I'm just making one at the moment uh, to show you so I will just kind of try to uh, chain piece what I can but not ev obviously everything will be able do that way okay I will quickly take it to iron to make it nice and flat and direction of the seams is ir irrelevant here whichever you want whichever fabric takes you uh, because we won't need too much anything to anything so however you want to iron will be fine uh, you know depends on the fabrics you're using okay so I've got this piece back it goes to the middle and now like I said it's just a nine patch so I'm starting from the top two pieces and I will stitch them together then the second piece again I will just stitch that together and the bottom two pieces again together and we add the final pieces to the right so this one goes here just check which way your seams were going uh, to make sure they're still going the, the, the right direction they are not twisted at the bottom 
same with this one there's a, a fair few amount of seams here just pay attention so they are not uh, twisting as you're sewing and now like with any other nine patch you turn it other way around and just add those pieces together you do want to um, nest those middle seams here but again which way they will go it's um, it's you know irrelevant really uh, unless you're planning to put your blocks one on top of another that you may like to uh, iron them later you know or, or stitch them alternative ways um, I will be mixing my blocks and I will show you that on the layout in a bit so for me uh, I don't have to worry about that one now I'm putting the stitch part on top of the, the thing which is still due to stitch just so I can see which way I've stitched that side with so those seams will go the same way Again, here this I've stitched down so the bottom part needs to go up again a little bit of nesting here so that, that's it for the sewing with this block I will now take it to the iron board and obviously iron it uh, nice and flat I will use a little bit of starch to make sure that when I get to uh, putting uh, blocks together um, you know they will look okay I've noticed here I've twisted one seam that's not the problem, I can just snip it here, how to fix it, snip it here close to the seam, to that corner and then I can re-iron it flat as well, so that's a small tip there, it happens to everyone every now and then. And now just before I show you the final blocks and how I will lay them out, let's just quickly go through uh, the places where you can find me. You can find me on my own website page where you can find all the uh, patterns I've mentioning here. You can also find some ready-made items if you are in UK you, you can purchase from me. There's also a part where you can buy me either tea, coffee or lunch to support my uh, channel. Uh, the other place you can find me is my Facebook uh, group page or my uh, Polar Photo Facebook uh, page. Uh, group page is for those who would like to share their work uh, from my tutorials, so feel free to join us there. Uh, there's lots of nice people there and they will be very supportive of your work and obviously they will provide their own tips and tricks as well. You can find me on Instagram, I've got my page there which is called Pola Quilting and I've got my own hashtag if you like to tag me which is Pola Quilting with friends. Be sure to check the description below because all the links to those mentioned places are there as well as uh, some links to tutorials which are linked to this one or some other ideas uh, I've mentioned so it's all in one place for you all the playlists are listed there as well so it's it's good to have that reference I also put the links to Amazon uh, shopping list either in UK or USA for some stuffs I'm using in my own sewing room so if you like to uh, have a look at those you've got opportunity there so this is what the block looks like when it's finished this is just one block but it's really nice big size and if you need uh, maybe a small table runner you can use just one this block to go with it you can use it for kind of bigger placements as well so that's a uh, option if you need longer table runner just put two of those blocks uh, lengthwise next to each other and that will sort that one as well so this is how the two blocks look uh, together and if you uh, set them this way you've got square table runner perhaps or nice big uh, cushion cover or both. <laughs> you can make yourself a really nice set. So it's 24 by 24 inches uh, when finished and it's really nice big uh, block. And now just few layouts you can uh, set them up together so this is the first one which is the easiest one either horizontal or vertical you can put those blocks very quickly together uh, for any size of the quilt you require and because it's a magic number principle applied here so two shorter uh, lengths of this block will match one longer uh, 
blo uh, blocks so you can set them up really in many different ways or if you have another block which is 12 and a half inch and finish you can obviously add it uh, to the mix as well I really like how those colors uh, come together uh, because those colors matching uh, you know together so well it, it will make a really calm type of the quilt I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you give it a give it a go uh, template uh, for the all the measurements will be on my website you can download from there thank you for joining thank you for watching and see you next time